What's up, guys? Welcome to the latest episode of Out of the Shadows. So this is going to be about authenticity. Now, what's going on with me today specifically, I'd had a therapy appointment, which was a couple hours before I'm scheduled to start work. And I just kind of came here because didn't really have much else to do, kind of thought I'd just have coffee, look online, whatever. And I've gotten, one, really bored, and two, kind of feeling a bit deflated, down, tired, like I'd, I'd love to just go home and rest and just be like, to hell with today, I'll try again tomorrow. Um, but this got me thinking, uh, there are some people who I observe who are doing similar things to me, and they're falling into this habit that I fell into in the beginning of doing all this. There's this very measured sense of, all right, well, how much do I share with people? You know, I'm supposed to be putting out this content that's inspirational and showing how much I've grown and how far I've come. And you start to worry about, it's all those things that I preach against, so to speak. I talk about how we should be able to be open about our feelings, depression, anxiety, whatever they may be. And there shouldn't be that stigma. And I talk about end, working to end that stigma, rather, excuse me. And I had to really sit down and think, if I'm trying to do that, I need to be honest when I'm struggling, for one. And two, I need to be able to talk about my own experiences from the past openly and without being ashamed. So I do feel as if I've, I've gotten there pretty well. I've done one video in particular where I was pretty depressed. That one's titled, uh, Depression, the Struggle is Real. Now, again, seeing this one video in particular today, it reminded me of how much we get caught up in this measured sense of, oh, I, I don't want people to see that side of me. If I'm, if I'm depressed or if I'm struggling with something, it must mean that I'm not being effective. And if I'm not effective, then why would you take my advice? And it's all these things that are kind of more evolved thoughts from the basic level of, not talking about being depressed or having anxiety or having a mental health diagnosis because you feel ashamed of it. You feel that people are going to think less of you. And I think that really people in general are more interested or at least pretty significantly interested in the real story. If I come on here and just give you a list of habits and goals and that's, that's all that I do, this is the most effective way. And here's a metaphor for this. And this is how you should do that. I'm falling into a trap and a pattern that I see a lot of people fall into. You're looking for the way to do something, the way to live, the way to have your best life. And you're going to follow this program to the T and that's going to do it. That's never going to work. No one who's had any real level of success and fulfillment followed a step by step. Yes, you get inspiration. Yes, you pull from different sources. But there's no such thing as a program of healing or a program of developing the best life that's just, all right, well, now I'm going to do number one. Now I'm going to do number two. You have to take what works, discard what doesn't, and add what's uniquely your own. That's a version of a Bruce Lee quote, actually. But, you know, I wanted to be honest. Like I said, I'm tired, kind of a little bit depressed, to be honest, and I don't I don't want to do anything. I really, I didn't even want to make this video. I thought about making a video and I was like, ah, I'm not feeling it. You know, I've been telling myself I should write more notes again. I should be doing this at home. I shouldn't just be doing everything from the car and off the cuff. But then, like I said, seeing this content today and seeing this lack of openness really, and that kind of, in my opinion, this fear of really being open and honest and allowing it to be okay to be like, you know what, I'm uninspired or really, I guess more specifically that that's not accurate. It, it being okay to have a story in which you came from hardship and you dealt with hardship and there was a time or there are still times like in my case where you deal with those feelings of depression and you've dealt with hopelessness and sometimes you do feel like, oh man, like this isn't going to work out. So I, I, I decided to do this for that purpose. And also it would be a good use of my time as opposed to sitting here and just scrolling away for no apparent reason. 
But, you know, struggles make us who we are, and it's what gets us to where we are, where we're, you know, trying to go, so to speak. As I've said a million times in the past, you know, I've, I've dealt with depression. Um, a big one that I'm sure I've mentioned this in my content somewhere, especially the videos where I'm specifically talking about past experiences, but I had lost a friend, a mentor. He was actually the president of the company that I'd worked for. They were a smaller company, so he had a very... He was very present. You, you were able to speak to him. You'd see him. And he was a really good friend. He was a father figure to me. And he died suddenly of a heart attack two and a half years ago at this point. But that had sent me into the greatest depression I had ever known. And that's saying a lot because I've been through some pretty significant depressions where... I wasn't functioning, you know, it was the struggle to get out of bed, kind of some of these things you hear that are textbook, so to speak, but he kept me working. You know, I struggled with my depression to make work regularly, and he was very understanding of me having time off if I was having issues. He'd had a uh, mental illness was in his family, so he was very acquainted with it, I guess you could say. And he was like this pillar to me that would kind of, you know, it held me up, it kept me there. And when I lost that, I literally was just like, oh my God, how am I going to do this without him? I can't. Like that was my, the thought that I had while he was still around was like, all right, you know, he's backing me and one day I'm going to be able to do this consistently. I'm going to be able to show up consistently and I will, you know, I'll get on salary and that's how I'll, I'll live and I'll have this this decent life, at least that was, that was as far as my mind could go was a decent life. I had no prospects of a fulfilling life. I had no prospects of making any kind of meaningful difference. I didn't know that I cared to. It was more just to minimize my own suffering. That's how bad it was. And in, in losing him, I had gotten so deeply depressed that I actually, I ended up, I stopped working for a year I ended up going into what they call an intensive outpatient program, which is where you go to therapy several times a week. For me, it was five days a week, four hours a day, and it's all group therapy. It's, it's an intensive therapy. My psychiatrist slash therapist, same person, recommended it. And at first, I was hesitant and... I tried to structure it in a way that I could go to because these were offered at mostly hospitals, I think probably exclusively hospitals. I was trying to structure it to where I could have one that was close to my house. And I was like, oh, this is the easiest and this is where I can go and people won't see me go. Like I, you know, social anxiety and all these sorts of things played in. And it got to the point where I had to go somewhere that was about 15 miles away. I think, I think I had to be there at 7 a.m., which was also very unappealing because when I'm depressed, I like to sleep long. So it forced me to have to do that. And it got me on a path, you know, this was close to a year after my, my, uh, friend, boss, mentor had passed away. It forced me to reevaluate things, to look at my life, to look at how I was processing things, to look at how I was allowing others opinions really influence who I was and kind of restrict me from expressing myself because I thought, Oh, well, that's not how you should be. So you know, that's a, it's a big revelation on my part. I just figured I'd throw that out there. It's a pretty big story. There's people outside the car getting in their car. And this is, it's a little embarrassing. Well, I'm human. But anyway, so I wanted to put this out to kind of just, uh, you know, show an authentic part of me and my struggle. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you got something out of this. As always, please, you know, leave me some comments below. Follow me on Instagram at out of the shadows Corvo, all one word, just like my shadow, just like my shadow. That's awesome. Isn't it? Isn't it crazy? It's just like my shadow, <laughs> just like my name here on my channel. And until later, my friends be well.